Hi everybody, I'm Seamus. I'm Josh. I'm Mumble. And I'm Chris. And I'm Rootscar. Oh. God damn it, Chris. I th no, we're breaking our tradition, Chris. I broke out of the box full of piranhas and spiders, which I don't even know how you expect the piranhas to stay alive in a dry box, but okay. Piranhas. Piranhas. Who says piranhas? Piranhas! No, they are not pies. Anyway. So we're all here this week. No thanks to Mumbles, Josh, Chris, James. And now we're... Chris is just... I mean, Josh is just driving into things, I guess. I thought I knew what we were talking I, about, but then I realized... Oh, I, I have no yeah. idea what we're talking about. <laughs> you hit that guy. But Skarn, I'm so afraid you're gonna have to leave the show. It's a new policy I'm making up. You have to be an English speaker. Uh, this is gonna be an English-only show from now on. <laughs> You, you know, you can make it. Candle to Kaya's. Oh, cool! I broke it. So I didn't know you could use the car in this scene, and I manually killed every <laughs> one of those guys. Oh, oh damn! Suck. That would be hard. Missing out. <laughs> it, it was not hard. It was just mind-bogglingly tedious. Really? I this really game mind-boggling tedious. Shows. Tell me more. So this is. This section here, I think, is one of the better parts where it tries to do at least a creepy build-up where you can, like, hear them walking around. I jumped yeah, although, like, at that particular... Yes. That, that moment, uh, that was a genuine jump scare. I, I like, uh, hands left the keyboard. Jump. Okay. Uh, granted. But it probably would have also been better if it didn't slow down the slow mo cinemato vision. Oh yeah, I that, that is always the thing. worst. Like, like, I it got a jump out of me. Okay, it surprised me. I wasn't expecting that, but then it's like, and I'm like, oh great, I've entered. I've surprisingly entered the matrix. You know, and then who it gives you like better? ten seconds to get ready for the threat Bio instead of making you deal with it desperately. Bioshock has not. hella jumps, and they don't slow it down, can, just can suddenly there's a splicer in your fucking face. I don't, so, I don't want to remember that game. I'm trying to think of why they would do the slowdown, and the only answer I can come up with is they wanted people to be aware of the enemies, and, and make it not scary. The, the, the right only explanation <laughs> exactly. I can come up with is, yes, they want people to come up with the enemies, maybe not because they didn't want it to be scary, because I think I think I think it's safe to say they probably wouldn't discourage the fear reaction of their players. Even if you're arguing this isn't a horror game, according to Hoyle, you might say, you're probably not going to say they're actually going to try not to scare their players. But I think they're mostly just hey, look, afraid another that matrix won't chair. Be able to handle it. I mean. Where's this like coming from? But I think a bunch of old people are playing it. I mean, yeah, Seamus played it, but. On the other hand, actually not. I think that this game is man. pretty unforgiving at times. <laughs> I mean, you know, it doesn't always give you enough ammo. You know, it's, some of the sections do expect you to into with things a little bit. But I think it's more that they just kind of think players are stupid. Like, they won't really know how to handle situations. They, they won't really know how to figure things out on their own. So they hit you over the head with everything. Alan narrates absolutely everything. All the enemies come at you in slow-mo to set up for yourself, especially if you're someone who's writing a, a game based around narrative and story, yeah. I guess, yeah. and symbolism. So that's, exactly, um... to beat you over the head with symbolism. Look, here's symbolism. I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's a symbol. What is the Dark yeah, Crisis logging yeah. now? Stone Cold. So that um that manuscript page we saw uh, a minute ago that was one of the more important ones. It explains why uh, the darkness hasn't actually just taken Alan Wake, because um, it needs him to do creative stuff, and to do creative stuff it needs more than uh, the brain functions which, required to talk about hot dog. Which is why it's trying to kill him. More creative. Yeah, I was right. Just about yeah. To say, why is it trying to kill him then? It, it's sort of this like, game would be a lot cooler if it was a little kid. A little kid had to write no the story. Because then the little kid would come up with crazy crazy oh, stuff. Oh, that would be so messed up if this was being written by a little kid and you just had to deal with it and you had to stop yeah. the kid. 
Oh, that actually man, would reflect would... a lot more Stephen I King am stuff, the greatest! And now and, and I will then... fight shadows for no reason! Like, and, weird and shit then... can start happening. Like the chainsaw for a face kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza troll. Axe cop. So isn't that isn't that sort of kind of what people wanted Epic Mickey to be? I mean, not I not no. as written by a people child. People wanted but Epic like... Mickey to be steampunk, and they didn't get it. Yeah. That's basically all okay. they wanted. So I'm gonna take this onto a little bit of a tangent, which is like with the the manuscript page we find. One complaint that we've gotten a lot over the course of the show is when something doesn't make sense, or like a, a plot is ridiculous, or you know, two things don't connect, and we say like, why, why didn't they, don't they bother to explain this or hand wave this? You know, what, this is so weird. And then someone will point out like, well, no, actually, if you read I this page, or if like you go off to this so part of the map, or like if you swing. find and hack this terminal, it has a, an explanation hidden in it. Now the thing is. People like to justify this sort of thing as those who want the story can work hard for the story, those who don't want the story can just ignore it. But I think there really does exist a third class of person. The kind of person who does care about, like, at least the story making sense and being internally consistent and, you know, having the appearance of something that's logical and was thrown together by people who know what they're doing, but who doesn't want to hunt all over the place to ensure that that's the case. Who doesn't want yeah, to it's... like extend an extra effort reading things and not playing the game? Who wants to be informed of it outside the narrative? Imagine if you watched a movie where every other thing didn't make sense, but you could consult a little booklet you're handed in when you walked into the theater to read something else, like to read. Yeah. Oh to no, the reason he doesn't have the gun in that scene is because the sheriff confiscates it two scenes earlier. You know, and I, I know that a game is an interactive that... medium, but yeah, mumbles. I would argue that they don't do the searching thing very well. Like uh, Fallout, for example, if there's something that you want to uncover about the past, it all is in one area. Like if you go to a factory and there's some weird thing that happened coffee? at the factory, I love coffee. You, oh, I missed it. You can get all the information <laughs> for it at that don't factory. Don't come back up. You don't have to go searching around the whole world unless it integrates the whole world, but that's pretty rare. And I think that, like, if you want parts of the story, you should be able to no gather them in a small area, so it doesn't I take, like, oh, you should have gone all enough, of the pages everywhere. Point, like, that's you, crazy. Yeah, pump-action shotgun. And sometimes, and relax, I'm not addressing anyone specifically, and I really do mean sometimes, the whole mentality of, you know, we, we're the ones who are interested in the story, so we searched and we found these documents and it now makes sense to us. They shouldn't have to work this into the narrative and make it make sense to you. Kind of smacks of, well, it's a little bit like we're proud that we did the work, and we yeah. don't think people who didn't put in the work should be able to get a coherent story. But it's like not it. even well, good it, work. It's no, fetch quest no, it's, work. And a lot of it. Well, here's the, here's the real problem. You know, it's like, oh well, this this page over here addresses your concerns, and it's like, well, wait, I read that page, and it. It sort of like closes that plot hole and opens another, so it doesn't really fix the story. It's just more work to have a different level of brokenness, but now everybody can't have a conversation of it. <laughs> now we can't talk yeah. about it because everybody has different perceptions of what's wrong with it. I, it there's also the problem that, uh, again, all of the manuscript, or at least the majority of the interesting manuscripts, all take place outside of the scope of the actual gameplay, where, you know, Alan will find a bunch of stuff and it'll fill, you'll find a bunch there of There are even some and... hidden away on the highest difficulty level that you can't even get to without beating the game once. That's so stupid. And but funny, I mean, they're pretty boring. They're badly written, they're narrated by Alan as if he's reading off his shopping list. Yeah, they're not like, to a woman like in a Fallout... They're like these really funny emails between, like, co-workers, and you want to read them because they're, like, interacting with each other and, like, accusing each other of shit, and that makes it more engaging. But, like, well, again, a shitty book that was written in a week or whatever people have been saying, it's not engaging. It's stupid. Yeah, people say, oh, it's badly written on purpose. Okay, great. I don't like reading shitty books. Yeah, exactly. Unless it's funny, and guess what? This game is barely funny. Five percent of it is funny. 
Although yeah. I did, ha uh, I I don't want to jump ahead, but there is a really funny movie at the moment in this game. I hope we get to it this week, because I I just played through it this morning and I laughed my ass off. And it was intentional funny too. So I really hope we get. To I, I I actually kind of had the opposite reaction to the to the story manuscripts because even though they are sort of poorly written, they tell a much more interesting story than. Alan Wake goes through the woods and shoots stuff again. And as I'm reading these documents about like a sci-fi thing where he writes the story yeah. and then it comes true, I'm like, I want to play that game. I don't want to play the yeah. shooter. Uh, I was having the same trouble in this part of the game. I wanted... I, I was like, oh, this is really... This is like a real mind screw, this thing. It's, it's a story becoming real. But then the gameplay is you um, doing this stupid kidnapper thing. And you know it's not relevant. Like, at this point in the story, you're not even sure if what you're seeing is real. Like, is this kidnapper real? Is his wife real? Does any of this matter? And and the other problem with the manuscript pages is, um... And... And this is a real big problem for this game, I think. Uh, they're all collection items. There are a few that are, like, hidden directly along the main path, but if you just run straight from one objective to the other, you're gonna miss probably 75% of the manuscript pages. And... You need those manuscript pages for this story to... to redeem itself, because... because just from... the stuff that Alan Wake tells you in cutscenes, it's not that great of a story, and it's the manuscript so pages how that flesh it out. That looks? It, it is Yeah, these are the worst. <laughs> like the the teleporting. He can catch me. Kind of a fat I can dance skull. all day. I can dance all day. <laughs> so at this point in the story, I was really sick of this whole kidnapper thing, and I wanted to move on. Like I was like, let's let's deal with this more interesting story. What is this about? About a story coming true and the things in your head actually happening. I mean, yeah. that's th the underpinnings of this story is actually, I think, really great stuff. And the it's sort of weird dead. that you've got Ghost this crazy down. mind freak decades, story, and then these really mundane enemies like, oh no, a barrel. Like, wait, this <laughs> is a story coming true. This could be anything. This could be some crazy Silent Hill level madness, and instead it's like. Oh, oh yeah. No, it's... Oh, oh, that's Langleers? another thing. What? What? Did, did I just take damage for stepping over that that tire? Did, did that yep. seriously just happen? Welcome to duty, soldier. I, and when I got hey. to the top of this hill, I sh he's like, "Oh, this place had been abandoned for a century." And my while he's saying it, my my flashlight is pointed directly at a '50s car. Something to fight. And <laughs> that was pretty awesome. And you can find supplies here, like pristine, never-opened lithium batteries lying around. Look, <laughs> Look, it's one of Thomas Edison's pristine, hundred-year-old lithium batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I love that boy. Oh, no, that's good. We're a long way from the northeast. He hid them here, from his enemy, Nikola Tesla. That said... I like like now that we're past most of the the people combat. I like this part of the game more, and and we're we're starting to get into the better part of the game, in my opinion. Like this, the end of this chapter and the next chapter are probably the best ones. You know, I hate that. I hate when people are. Like, <laughs> oh, the game and, gets and then better be in like... twenty hours. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is it is frustrating. That, um, coffee. I the... love coffee. It is frustrating because this isn't just an irredeemably horrible game. That's what frustrates me is there are some things in this game that are really yeah. great and some things where they they were smart, some things they tried to do really good and almost all of it ended up being undercut by, by what seems like things that could have been easily fixed. It's almost the opposite problem that Bioshock had where Bioshock kind of ended its story too early, threw all of its cards on the table in, like, the end of the second act, and and then just had nothing for the last bit. This game takes too long to get there. You, yeah, you spend so too long worrying about kidnapper plots. 
you spend too long on this stuff after it's... You know what, that wouldn't be a problem, but they've already kind of revealed this more insidious threat, and yet you're still fighting tractors. Yeah. Because everybody knows that's... That's what we're here for, is to fight an old tiny time tractor. It's really funny watching the physics engine handle this when it's thrown against, like, objects that... These things should definitely be able to knock down this tower. This kind of mass... Yeah. That's like a few metric tons of, of matter being thrown at these old steel bars. But of course it's a game level, so this is never going to fall over. You could just use these to block all of these things. That's what I did. I just oh, stood wow. here. In fact, I didn't even move during that fight. I stood there. I didn't high beam it. They just got stuck I'm in one of those beams, and I achievement. stood there and just pointed the flashlight at it for a few minutes. I actually I, I played through this section like an achievo every single time I played through a section. Oh, <laughs> I played through so this terrible. section this morning, and one of those fridges like flew over a fence and got stuck. And I was just able to shoot the beam of light through the fence while it lifted up to the bottom of the top of the fence and wasn't able to get over it, so every single time it would just hit the fence and bounce back down. It was the funniest thing. That, is, I felt sorry some for it. Of, some kind of breakthrough that a game designer realizes that light can penetrate fences. Chain link fences. Uh. Game designers have it in their head that chain link fences are force fields that stop light and bullets and people. Well, it wasn't a chain link fence, it was actually a wooden fence with some gaps in it. And I, oh, and I did eventually get worse. tired of sh trying to shoot it through the fence and just like sidestepped out from one side and then sidestepped back when it started trying to throw itself at me. I actually kind of like these sections with the giant, impossibly large things being thrown at you. Not because the point, they're really interesting. This. I needed they're, a they're not really interesting. run five feet, pick up but, key. It's yeah. it's a more interesting combat because your your movement actually matters and you can actually position yourself in a way to glitch out the physics yeah. system. Whereas fighting the other guys is just sort of like, oh, okay. More of these guys. It does sort of feel like you're fighting Gordon Freeman, though. Anything outside of the <laughs> I feel ill. I Good to drug, Gordon Freeman. There's a shoebox. <laughs> oh man, I love the this little. I love this little thing with the guy looking. At the, although, is it me or in this scene does Alan Wake look like no Aunt Wiley? He looks like the spoony one. He really does. Because Sam Lake looks like the spoony one. Especially when he goes all wide-eyed on you. Like he starts giving you the crazy eyes. I hate when he does the crazy eye. I hate it! Ah, this book sucks! If I ever find who wrote it, I'm gonna stab him in the brain! But that's not Sam Lake, though. That's the guy that played Will Scarlet or Scarlet whatever. So this Sam Lake is the Max Payne television is the first thing that poses the question, um... Uh... The people have actually been debating over in the comments is uh, we know that Alan Wake has this this like backstory to his story where this woman gets taken over by the darkness, I guess, and uh, and there's this other writer, Thomas Dane. Um, but the question is, did that actually happen, or did Alan Wake cause that when he wrote it into his story, or what? I'd it's implied that it had to have happened. happened. Yeah. Because that, uh... Well, I won't spoil it. The dream. <laughs> right. Oh, I But during, during this whole this whole kidnapper section, those are the questions that's on your mind. are like, what is real, and what's the, the deal with Thomas Zane, and, and everything, but then you're playing through, and it's just, ah, give me the manuscript. And it feels so... <laughs> Hold on. The killer sent me a text. It was full of spelling errors and insults. He told me to hurry up. How about just letting us see the damn text, huh? I know. And then you so if I have my bearings right... Dramatic reading of that. If I have my bearings right, down over there is where Chris's imaginary matrix chair is, and where we had that fun romp around. That is so uh, real. Did you yeah. see that comment? Yeah, I saw the comment. But it didn't have a manuscript page on it, so you still failed. It, it was coffee, it I was mistaken. coffee! 
Which would have been just perfect. Thank you.